Well, I did a partial review of Avengers Endgame yesterday. Unfortunately, I was using a terribly old iPad. It's the equipment I am served with, and I uh, it, it just didn't work. It just stopped about three quarters of the way through. I kept on talking, and then I came to the end, and I was like, the, the screen's just been frozen, basically. I thought the audio might have been picked up. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. Probably not going to do that again for a very long time. But, uh... But there were, there were things which I said which obviously didn't get into the live stream. So I wanted to, to finish off on the review itself. Plus, counts as another video. Need the content. But yeah, I think that there were certain things which I didn't get to talk about in the cut down live stream that, that I want to. And a couple of them are small things. A couple of them are, them are, are huge, impactful, shocking, stunning things that happened in the film. So we'll start off with good things. So, Captain America. Spoilers, by the way, big spoilers. This is spoilery review part two. Wow, yep, yeah, I really mucked up that live stream. Captain America using Mjolnir. Now, it's something we've all wanted. It was teased in Avengers Age of Ultron when Cap budged it. Just, just, a, just a smidge. And Thor was like, no, you can't do it. But Thor's reaction when Captain America picked it up was, I knew it. Which was was so fulfilling in a way that he, he knew he was worthy all along, but there was something niggling which wasn't allowing him to pick it up. And I think I know what it was, which wasn't enabling him to hold the hammer and be worthy. And it was the fact that he was harboring this lie of Tony's parents and how Bucky actually killed them. And he wasn't being honest with Tony. And because of that, it was leading to him not being able to be honorable, basically. And I think that caused a, a problem with him being able to lift the hammer. And now that that's, that was all sorted out in Civil War and past that, he's free and he is now honourable. And because of that, man, he was he was chucking that hammer all over the place. He was commanding the thunder. I wasn't expecting him to be doing that. I thought he would be chucking the hammer. But for him to be like smacking the thunder about with Thanos, that was mad. Uh, and the shield in one hand and the hammer in the other... It was uh, nerdgasms for nerdgasms. It was everything everyone wanted from this film. I think that's something which everyone could agree we wanted to see in this film or in the MCU in general. And the Russos finally, finally gave it to us. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. And I did say in the live stream that I preferred Infinity War 2 Endgame as a film overall. As a crescendo to the MCU so far and Phase 3, because Phase 4 is probably not, probably going to be the worst phase. Probably, yeah. Maybe not. Prove us wrong. But, you know, Phase 1 was really good, apart from Hulk and Iron Man 2. Phase 2 was really good, apart from Thor The Dark World, basically. Uh, phase 3 has been really good, apart from Captain Marvel and Ant-Man the Wasp. So, they got a few stinkers, but other than that, all the films have been really pretty solid. And I just have to be frank, I do prefer Infinity War to Endgame for a number of reasons, but one which stuck out to me in retrospect was... I don't think Endgame is rewatchable. I, I don't think you can, you choose to sit through this film. If you're on a whim and you're on a, a Sunday night and you're with some people, you're like, let's watch Endgame. I don't think that would happen. I don't think this is going to be like that. It's too dark. It's too heavy. There, were, there is too much stuff in here that engages you way too much. Infinity War was dark. It had those tones. It had that vibe to it. But small things like colour palette make a difference and Infinity War was a much brighter film than Endgame and obviously that's because of the whole tone of it and the way the story had gone and that's where Endgame was, we were in this dark world. But small things like that, like that just don't make the film rewatchable. I don't think I would choose to sit through this film on a whim. I would have to want to watch this film. Like I can sit through Iron Man 1 whenever I want, Winter Soldier, whenever, Doctor Strange, any time, Thor 1, Captain America 1. Civil War is another one. I, I can't just sit through that film. I have to want to watch it. I can't just on a whim decide to pick up Netflix and, and click it on, click it on, you know? And I think this is going to be one of those where it's not something you, you, you just randomly choose to watch. You have to want to watch it at the time. And maybe that's a good thing and maybe that's a bad thing. But I don't think this film has a lot of rewatchability compared to the other, other Avengers film. I think every other Avengers film is more rewatchable than Endgame. It's, uh, I mean, maybe that's a testament to how well they did in portraying the, the the emotions in the film and how the actors really brought everything to it, that it was that um, resonating with everybody. But I, I do feel that you can't just uh, click this film on Netflix and sit down and have a good time. It's not a good time film. 
There are good moments in it. It's funny in times. It's it's sad. It's morbid. Uh, but it's not a good time film. I can sit down and watch Infinity War and enjoy it. I don't think you can sit down and enjoy this film. I, it's, it's weird. Just talking back to what I was saying in the live stream before it literally got cut off at that moment. I was talking about the old guard and the new guard of Avengers and the MCU overall. And the fact that if you look at these new characters, they've been basically pushed into pole position very quickly in the space of a couple of years. I mean, Doctor Strange is the oldest of all the, uh, the solo films of the new Avengers, basically. And his film came out at the end of 2016. And that's two and a half years ago. So the oldest member of this new look Avengers has only been around for two and a half years. He's done a good job. There's been a lot of character growth from his film, Doctor Strange, to where he was in Infinity War. And now there's been a real arc for him. So I'm, I, I'm less have, I less have a problem with him and more have a problem with other people, specifically Captain Marvel. You know, I mean, she you can say she's been in the universe since the 90s because that's when her film was. But we haven't seen her do anything in the world at all. There, there's no evidence of her being there and doing things apart from her film and right at the beginning of this film in Endgame. Like there's 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 nothing there to cement her in the world. And I think they really did shoehorn her in the film completely. And something which completely showed that was while while we were in the cinema, I, I was I hate loud crowds in cinemas. It's it really annoys me. I like watching my film. If there's the odd cheer, fine. But don't be bloody yapping and talking and bloody yelling and screaming just don't do it unless it's a comedy it you don't get away with noise in a theater all right it was a super loud crowd super obnoxious crowd and they were laughing throughout a lot of the film they were getting reactions like if if marvel could record a a movie theater reaction it was this because it was mad the amount people were reacting when captain marvel came on screen there were no reactions at all not one and when she came in at the end and did broke through a bloody ship, Thanos' ship, and then started attacking Thanos, there was nothing. The cheer was when Thanos actually smacked her with the power stone and people were like, oh, oh, like it was like that. It wasn't like, oh, oh, it was more like a jeer in happiness almost. And I don't think that's a good thing. It doesn't bode well for, for the MCU going forward, especially that she's the character they're, they're basically pinning it on and saying she's the new leader of the Avengers in a way or the new leader of the MCU. Because Mantis had one line in the film, the film line at the end about Thor and, and Star-Lord and someone was like, maybe we should use guns to, to figure out who's leader. And Mantis is like, let's use knives. And she did this weird thing. And the entire theater cracked up. Everyone was laughing. She, oh, sorry, my phone, bloody hell, that's annoying. Everyone was laughing at that particular line. And she, that was the only line she had. Captain Marvel had been in the film for way more than Mantis. And she didn't get any reaction. Okoye got reaction in the film. And I think she's actually a pretty well built out character. Overall, I, I, I prefer to watch a bloody Okoye film than a Captain Marvel 2. All right, I'm never gonna watch Captain Marvel again. It was just a really bad film. Probably the second worst MCU film for me behind Ant-Man and the Wasp because that was utter trash. It was so bad. It was, it was really, really, really non, non, uh, non bueno. No bueno. Mucho no bueno. I think I just said it's really not good, but I may have used the wrong tenses. I, Spanish, one year. I did one year of Spanish. 50%. Surprised I got 50%. Thought I would fail. Is 50% a fail? I, maybe. I literally got a 50%. My teacher was surprised. It was hilarious. She was like, you got 50%. I was like, oh, oh, that's bad. She was like, oh, you did really well. I was like, oh, wow, wow. Okay, well, my parents are not going to be happy with that. <laughs> my teacher thinks that's good for me. Yeah, yeah. I was much better at French. Much better at French. Tres, tres, bien. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Good old times. I do understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to be more inclusive and, and diverse with the people who are the superheroes on screen. But I do not think you've got a cultural winner with Captain Marvel. You definitely have one with Black Panther. Regardless of what I thought of the film, I thought it was like a six and a half out of ten. It was solid, it was fine, it's rewatchable in a way, but it's not one I'm gonna really harken back to. It's good. There is character development with Black Panther in a way. From what he was in Civil War to what he is going forward, there is a difference. 
There is nothing in Captain Marvel which makes me want to watch a second film of that. Spider-Man, at least, he's a kid. He gets away with certain things that other characters won't. And I think you really need to pin it on Doctor Strange, uh, Black Panther, and Spider-Man. You need to really go with those three and let those three be the ones leading it because because Captain Marvel is not is not your choice. If you wanted Chuck Scarlet Witch in there to be one of the people to lead, 100%. She's had so much growth since Avengers Age of Ultron. It's, it's, it's incredible how much her character development has gone. And just to chuck her away and be like, yeah, you're getting a TV show. You're probably not going to be in the movies anymore, in all likelihood. It's, it's, it's a really, really bad idea. It's a really bad idea. And it's what they've done with all of the old guard, all the, all the Avengers pre-2015. All essentially gone. There's no Black Widow anymore. She's dead. Predicted it. I said she was going to die because she was getting a prequel film. She dead. Black Widow dead. Very, very hard hitting death scene. Captain America, old man, basically dead. You know, might as well be. He's going to be dead in five years time. Okay. Tony, dead. Hawkeye, getting his own TV show, not going to be in the films anymore. Thor, destroyed character, have to rebuild the character. Not going to get another Thor film. It's going to be Guardians of the Galaxy. Maybe as Guardians of the Galaxy, could lean on that instead. Uh, but probably not going to get another Thor film for a very long time, if, if ever, really. Loki, he's not going to be in the MCU very much anymore. He's getting his own TV show. It, it's like... They're retiring these older characters, even though a lot of them have only been around for five years or less, into TV shows. Scarlet Witch and Vision, TV show. Falcon, who is now Captain America and Winter Soldier, are getting a TV show instead of a film. And, well, now they're not even calling the... the maybe they're going to change the name of the TV show. They might change the name of the TV show to Captain America and Winter Soldier. They might do that. Because, obviously, if they'd said that before Endgame had come out, people would have obviously known that, well... Cap is going to die and he's going to give on the shield. So they might change the name of the Falcon Winter Soldier TV show to Cap and, and Winter Soldier. And that, that could that could be cool. But I think they're shifting too quickly along. I think that's the main point of, of this video. Something that really stuck out. They're shifting along too quickly to the new guard. And they're not paying enough respect to, to the older characters, I don't think, in the way they're moving forward. In the film, they paid respect to them very well. But in, in what they're doing with the characters moving on, I, I think that, you know, Falcon is a stalwart at this point. You know, he is, he, him, War Machine, they are the guys who are, are veterans, really. At this, they are actually veterans. They are army veterans. They're the ones who should be there at the, the forefront and they're seemingly being retired. I mean, I don't know what film War Machine is going to be in. We're not going to get a War Machine film. I know that for sure. So the only way he's going to be in the MCU is in team up films. And I think from how much how much Don Cheadle has brought to that role and the way that he's been positioned in the MCU as 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 really a guiding point for it. You know, he is in a way him Captain America, Thor and and Tony are like a yin yang balance. He is sort of like a po politician in a way inside the Avengers. He's the one who handles with the due diligence probably. And to just remove him from that in a way is is not good. But yeah, I, I thought the film was good. If you, I suppose there were a lot of negative things, I guess, in this particular video. A lot more positive in the other one. Um, the film was good. It just wasn't the film I wanted, but I'm still happy with it. I would say if I had to give it a rating out of 10, it's like an 8 out of 10. 8.25 maybe. I don't really, I don't like saying it's 8.25, 8.27. I'll just, I'll just say it's 8, okay? It's 8. 8 out of 10. Good. Not what I wanted from the film, but I enjoyed it in a way, even though it wasn't an enjoyable film. It was a fun film, even though it was sad. It's confusing, all right? All the emotions were happening. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel down there. If you didn't, if you didn't, then the Fantastic Four will come after you, all right? Phase 4. Fantastic Four, it's going to happen. We're not getting X-Men for a lot of years, but we are probably going to get Fantastic Four in the next couple. You don't want that. You really know, so just subscribe anyway to avoid that. I've been the Ranger of the Comic. You've been great, and I'll see you next time. Skadoosh.